Welcome to Fun Pick of the Week, the segment that's all about profiling mutual funds. This week's pick comes to us from Steve Abrams, analyst with Morningstar Canada. The fund falls under the umbrella of Clarington Funds. It is the Clarington Global Equity and, as the name suggests, it's considered to be a global equity fund. Its inception date was August of 98 and so it's been around for over four years now. The fund has a four-star rating for Morningstar Canada. Management expense ratio for this particular fund currently stands at 2.96%, which is considered slightly above the average of 2.8%. We spoke with Abrams about the fund's long-term performance. The fund's done very well over the long term, especially because in the U.S. it's called Oppenheimer Global Fund. And uh, that fund is a five-star rating in the U.S. It, its current manager, William Willoughby, has been on deck since 1992. And he does a superb job of stock picking along with his Oppenheimer Global team. In the past three years, the fund, especially in Canada, only gets four stars because basically growth stocks have had a tough run. But what he's been able to do is diversify into more defensive stocks like consumer staples in Europe, which have helped alleviate or mitigate some of the problems that growth stocks have been running into. Fund manager Bill Wilby of Oppenheimer Funds looks for companies that stand to benefit either for mass affluence, new technology, restructuring or an aging population. As for performance numbers, the one month return stands at minus 3.3 percent, one year return at minus 12.9 percent and three year return currently stands at 9.6 percent. Since inception, the fund has returned 53 percent. What really hurt in the period was his tech play. He did get back into technology a little bit too much too early and that hurt especially in post 9-11. So for the year he was down but relatively compared to his rivals he was much better off because he had a lot of defensive stocks. Companies like in Germany for example, consumer staple like Rinket Benckiser, they manufacture household goods. You probably haven't heard of these companies and most, most growth funds don't own them but in fact this is what people were going towards. So he was wise enough to diversify and get out of some of the riskier names. Generally speaking, management prefers to buy good businesses when they report bad news. Typically, Wilby builds his long-term positions by betting against negative investor sentiment. As a result, there isn't a concentration on one region, but rather investment across a wide spectrum of industries. Historically, North America averages 50% of assets, with Europe around 40% and Asia at 8%. Once again, that fund is Clarington Global Equity, and for more information on that, just head over to Morningstar.ca on the internet. Internet. This week's fun pick comes to us from Steve Abrams, analyst with Morningstar Canada. Known to be the fifth largest Canadian equity fund, it is Fidelity True North. Currently has a five-star rating for Morningstar Canada, managed by Fidelity Investments. The fund was born September 1996, which means it's been around for over five years now. Its management expense ratio, or MER, currently stands at 2.51%, which is a little lower than average. Here's what Steve had to say about the fund's long-term performance. This is one of the biggest Canadian equity funds out there, and for good reason. Its uh, manager, Alan Radlow, is an excellent manager, and he's backed up by top-notch Fidelity Research. Uh, he's really more of a growth at a reasonable price manager, which is why he's been able to pick some of the best stocks out there at good prices. Uh, what he's also been very good at doing is avoiding some of the fray that some of his competitors got into, and that's especially evident when Nortel got huge in the TSE. He was one of the first managers to move to a capped index whereby he could play Nortel without having to own it in his huge proportions that the TSC had it. According to Steve, fund manager Alan Radlow's bets on so-called safe stocks helped him avoid most of the carnage in 2001. Post-September 11th, Radlow didn't add many growth stocks to his lineup based on the fact that they lacked superior fundamentals. The one-year performance for the fund stands at 1.5%, three-year at 13.8 percent and five-year performance numbers stand at 11.9 percent. Since inception, the fund has returned 101 percent. Some of the areas that have been very helpful for him have been in defensive areas like consumer products, merchandising, names like Sobeys, Loblaws, uh, Atco in the utilities field. Also, there's a few other manufacturers like in the knitwear industry. So overall, I'd say he's still a little hesitant to get back into the market. And whereas some of his competitors did better in the fourth quarter, because he had the cash, it didn't participate as much. But he's still got a very good long-term outlook. So I'd say going forward, you can expect this fund to do very well. 
As for a strategy, the fund is run on the principles of growth at a reasonable price. Radlow is constantly looking for companies with innovative products, strong management and increasing revenue. He is a long-term investor concentrating on areas that show compelling prices. Finally, the fund holds big winners such as Metro Inc. and Loblaw. It is overweighted in consumer products and merchandising and underweighted in technology, utilities and precious metals. The fund also holds conglomerates like Bombardier and Power Corp. Once again, that fund is Fidelity True North. And for more information on that, you can always head over to Morningstar.ca on the Internet. This week's fun pick comes to us once again from Steve Abrams, analyst with Morningstar Canada. The fund falls under the umbrella of TD Mutual Funds. It is TD Entertainment and Communications 1 and it is considered to be a science and technology fund. It currently has a five-star rating for Morningstar on both sides of the border. Its inception date was November 1997, which means it's been around for over four years now. The fund has a management expense ratio of 2.75%, just a hair below the median science and tech fund, which stands at 2.78%. We spoke with Abrams about the long-term performance of the fund. The mandate, as the name would imply, it means it can own anything in media from newspapers, television, radio broadcasting, all the way to telephone service providers, wireless, handset. So it's a pretty wide mandate that they can play with. Uh, the current manager, Robert Gensler, has been on the helm since around 2000, a year and a half maybe. But he's been working with the fund since 95, so you can attribute a lot of performance to him. And what he's done when he took over is added a lot more value to the fund in terms of valuation, uh, less growthy stocks, more conservative play, and then also he's added a lot more global perspective to the fund. TD Entertainment and Communications One is essentially a Canadian clone of T. Rowe Price Media and Communications, which has been available to U.S. investors since 1993. As for performance, the fund's one-month return stands at minus 2.7%, one year at minus 14.7 percent and three year return stands at four and a half percent. Since inception the fund has returned 74 percent. What really helped the fund is as I said the defensive element. He, he also has a huge cash stake as well which is always going to help when things are doing badly. But what he did was move into media and incumbent telecom providers. Is that, that's what he likes to call them. And those would be names like AT&T, but unfortunately, even though he's a telecom guy by trade, that's not really what was doing well. What really did well were some of the media picks he had. So names like Viacom, Rogers, uh, in the States, Gannett, uh, Knight Ritter, newspaper manufacturers. So he, what he's starting to do is add some of the media back in. Fund manager Robert Gensler rotates the fund sector emphasis based on his 18-month outlook, but he is still a conservative investor. He buys communications and media-related issues that stand to benefit from secular trends. He also likes to buy companies that are trading at a relative discount to their respective peers. Finally, in terms of holdings, Gensler is currently scaling back incumbent phone companies such as AT&T and BCE. In their place, he is adding media names like Viacom and Rogers. 50% of assets are dedicated to the media, meaning anything from newspapers to radio. Once again, that fund is TD Entertainment and Communications One. And for more information on that, you can always head over to Morningstar.ca on the Internet.